Right, hello, welcome. And uh, this is a new, slightly new format of video. Because um, I want to show you some things. Like, why are people so stupid? You know, uh, we've got all these people at university. And um, f uh, geophysts and geologists and um, things like that. Uh, Wikipedia, Expanding Earth. The Expanding Earth or Growing Earth hypothesis asserts that the position of relative movement of continents is at least partially due to the volume of the Earth increasing conversely. Geophysical global cooling was the hypothesis that various features could be explained by Earth contracting. Okay, so now they're saying it's shrinking. Uh, Expansion with constant mass, mass addition. Okay, it's actually been around then. It'll end up me being the stupid one. In 1888, even <laughs> suggested that some sort of ether is absorbed within Earth and transformed into new chem chemical elements, forcing the celestial bodies to expand. This was connected with his mechanical explanation of gravitation. Also, the thesis of Dududum and Nikola Tesla were based on absorption and transformation of ether energy into normal matter. Okay, this is quite interesting. After initially supporting continental drift, the late Australian geologist Warren Carey advocated expansion from the 1950s, before the development of plate tectonics provided the generally accepted explanation of the movement of continents. Okay, so this was a theory before, and then plate tectonics has actually taken over. Demonstrating that subduction and other events could not balance the seafloor spreading at oceanic ridges and piling yet unresolved paradoxes that continue to plague plate tectonics. Starting in 1956, he proposed some sort of mass increase in the planets and said that a final solution to the problem is only possible in a cosmological perspective in connection with the expansion of the universe. Well, that's actually what I agree with, that everything in the universe is growing. So the Earth is growing, the Sun is growing, the Moon is growing, and also the space between everything is growing. Bruce Heazine initially interpreted his work on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge as supporting S. Warren Casey's expanding Earth theory, but later withdrew his support. Finally convinced by the data and analysis of his assistant, Mary Tharp, the remaining proponents after the 1970s, like the Australian geologist James Maxlow, are mainly inspired by Carey's ideas. In the last few decades, no cre credible mechanism of action has been proposed for this addition of new mass and there's no credible evidence for new mass having been added in the past. The increased gravity of Earth would have altered the orbits of the celestial objects in the solar system, not if they were all growing, including Moon's orbit and Earth's own orbit, and as we know, the Moon is getting slightly further away from the Earth all the time. Proponents have no adequate explanation to address this problem. Is the big obstacle for acceptance of the theory by other geologists. Okay, fair enough. Well, at least they're looking at it. That's actually better than I thought. I'd buried, buried up. Let's have a look then at uh, plate tectonics. <clears throat> so look then. Plate tectonics from the late la 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 scientific theory can describe the large scale motion of several seven large plates and the movements of a larger number of smaller plates of the Earth's lithosphere. Since tectonic processes began on Earth between three and three point five billion years ago, the model builds on the concept of continental drift. Think how heavy a continent is and it's just drifting around on seabed. Well, I know that. We're going to watch the video. Uh, let's just do that now because I cannot be bothered to read all this shit. We're going to see uh, subduction and what a load of crap that is. Um, 
let's have a look at the 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 blaring uh, the blaring uh, evidence that is blaring in our face. This one's even called seafloor spreading, right? It went the picture. Okay. So here we got age of oceanic lithosphere that's based on the ocean floor. And you know, it is hard stuff. It's not as thick. The stuff over the land is uh, you know, between thirty and fifty kilometers thick, and the stuff over the sea is more like 5, 10, 15. So here we have age in millions of years. Zero. <laughs> Zero to ten. Look. Look. This is new crust. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer. And then we've got, you know, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, and that's near the cracks, right? And we got light blue and dark blue, and you see that's kind of near the near the edges of the continents. Now the grey is still the old stuff. So, you know, in all of these pictures, the blindingly obvious thing is that Earth is expanding, and this is new. This is new crust, and the stuff on the land is old crust. And they know it is. They've measured it. It's 3.5 billion years old. And as, as we see here, there's nothing older than 180 million years under the oceans, except sort of near the in the main ocean crusts. So that stuff in the green, you know, so um, 100 million years ago, none of this red and yellow even 80 million years ago none of that was there it's grown since and it's obviously doing it gradually incrementally but there's some big obviously some big big changes a big change there big change there so what do you think are the continents sliding around on the earth you know when it was Pangaea what was the force that started them off moving in several different directions or is it expanding Earth? And just because you know we haven't found the answer yet to the question that it leaves, why did it start growing? Is it increased mass or increased heat, or both? Just because it remains a question doesn't mean we should disregard it and start thinking about stupid stuff like this. The idea that our planet's continents drift around the globe, periodically glomming together and breaking apart, is at least years old. But Jake. most geologists didn't believe it until the 1960s, when mounting evidence made it clear that the Earth's crust is broken up into fragments, and that those fragments, called tectonic plates, are moving. And these days we directly track that motion, with millimeter precision, from space. The common simplified explanation for why tectonic plates are moving is that they're carried along on currents in the upper mantle, the slowly flowing layer of rock just below Earth's crust. Converging currents drive plates into each other, diverging currents pull them apart. This is mostly true. Hot mantle rock rises from the core and moves along under the crust until it grows cool and heavy and sinks back down again. But the plates aren't just passively riding these currents around like a bunch of suitcases at the baggage claim. They can't be, because some of the plates are moving faster than the currents underneath them. For example, the Nazca Plate, a chunk of ocean crust off the west coast of South America, is cruising eastward at about 10 centimeters per year, while the mantle underneath it oozes along at just 5. Neither... You know, I don't know about this, you have to be a bit skeptical, but watch what they do in a minute with this thing, it looks like a poo. <laughs> and by the way, has anyone ever been to the beach and seen this? Watch in a minute. Neither tectonic plates nor luggage can move faster than the belts they're riding on unless something else is helping to push or pull them along. And some of Earth's plates, it turns out, are pulling themselves. When an ocean plate collides with another ocean plate or Which a never happens. thick crust of continental land masses, the thinner of the two plates bends and slides under the other. As the edge of the sea floor sinks into the mantle, it pulls on the plate behind it, the same way a chain dangling further and No, further that is not the same way a chain dangling falls off a table because you've got a massive fucking rock stuck in the middle of it. 
a table will eventually start to swell. Sorry. The bigger the sunken portion of the plate becomes, the harder it pulls and the faster the remaining plate behind it pulls. <laughs> you can see <laughs> this is happening just Ooh, it's upside down. by looking at Google Earth. The incredibly deep, narrow ocean trenches visible off the coasts of some continents and island chains mark the creases for the ocean crust. Doesn't mean anything! Power, bending the edge of its neighbor in the process. What's more, these chunks of seafloor are actually helping to drive convection in the mantle beneath them. Sunken slabs of ocean crust block flowing rock from moving further sideways, forcing it to turn downwards and sink. And eventually those slabs get too heavy and break off, plunging slowly toward the core and creating a suction force that pulls mantle material along behind them. What? Oh my gosh. You know what's happened here is... Okay, they used to have an expanding earth theory. Then some clever git came up with plate tectonics and it sounds really clever and yes, this explains why we have a Pangea because people just couldn't get their head around it before or something. And and then they find about the age of the ocean floor and they invent this bullshit to fit their theory. So in basically. some ways, seafloor crust is really more like part of the conveyor belt than something riding on top See? of it. The continents, on the other this hand, is what they think. are baggage. So that's what they think. They think that ocean crust is basically just moving all the time, you know, like erupting here and then sliding under the continents in a sort of a process. They imagine that the Earth has been the same size for three and a half billion years and that this ocean crust has been turning itself around. Well, then how did all the seashells get... Uh, Put on the land masses. Well, let's just have a look at this. Seashells found seashells fossils on every continent. Ammonite rings a bell. Um. <laughs> High drop above sea level. Flood evidence. Fossils of sea creatures are found in rock layers high above sea level. This is just one more evidence of the truth of God's word. Okay. It is beyond dispute among geologists that on every continent we find fossils of sea creatures in rock layers which today are high above sea level. For example, we find marine fossils in most of the rock layers in the Grand Canyon. Let's just finish this stupid video. Oh, it's finished. Right, watch this. We come to the earth which well grew to get here the way it is now. Here is our world, our planet Earth, floating in space. We will be going backward in time, imperfectly, but done in a very disciplined manner. Please notice there is no subduction, no rotation of tectonic plates, no twisting, no form fitting, no altering shapes or sizes. It would be impossible, impossible for these continental plates to fit together perfectly without this being true and yet the upper tectonic plates fit together perfectly on a much smaller planet. Yes, there's been some erosion, landslides, blah blah, but overall this activity is insignificant. There is a kind of conspiracy of silence among certain scientists. Now, if you know, just noticed all the water gone, right? Uh, you didn't actually see the planet shrink in this video. But the water's gone, and it wouldn't just be gone, would it? So when the Earth was this size, it was covered in water. They know, but are not telling you, that the upper tectonic plates of Earth also join in the Pacific. Not partially. They join totally. You are asked to believe that the continents swim or drift about willy-nilly bumping and crashing as if they were on a grease skillet. This is not true. The simple truth is apparently too upsetting for too many apple carts. 
We're now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the Earth took place. Imperfect as the details, but the overall is nailed. Antarctica, as you see, has become subtropical. Africa and a smaller globe move way downward under the globe. In fact, for hundreds of millions of years, the bottom of Africa was the South Pole. South America's tail goes under and wraps around the bottom of Africa. Then incredibly, it joins coast with Antarctica. 65 million years ago and more, these continents were joined and marsupials like the duckbill platypus roam from Australia, Antarctica, and across southern South America and up into Africa, the platypus. Dinosaurs roamed all over this world on the upper tectonic plate because there were no oceans, just shallow seas. Here today, Antarctica is frozen over and Australia... So he disagrees with me there. He saying they're just shallow seas so I'd say there's there was rich otherwise where did the water come from that's in the oceans now it must have still been there so okay it might not have been deep but it would have been covering the whole planet and that's why Dover is made of coral chalk any chalk land is made of coral so it was underwater and yeah dinosaurs there were dinosaurs underwater, plenty of them, but there would have been some land emerging where dinosaurs would have roamed. The surrounding islands are the remaining home of marsupials. Do you see how broadly the Pacific is opening compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly why the knee-jerk Pangaea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to easily visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child would recognize it, but they are the same. Right, I think that's finished. So basically, if we were to use our logic, like says a child can see it so you know it's sending all these people to university and they can't even figure out something as fundamental as the planet we're on and how it came to look like it is with all the evidence staring them in the face so how to become so stupid and if we can't rely on these people with diplomas and things well then we obviously need some sort of logic movement. <laughs> I'll be in it. Okay. I'm going to stop this now. Bye.